Okay, what we have, we still have our swage punch in here. We're using the expanding die from Lee. I'm going to put this in here like this. We have a bolt that just slightly fits through here like that. And the reason why we're doing that is we're going to put a slight flare on this jacket. This one's a little bit on the crushed looking side, but he's going to be fine. And what you want to do is take a deburring tool. and bevel the inside edge. I'm going to run this up. You're going to feel it stop a little bit. See, notice how little I'm actually turning this here? All right. Now once we have it set, we're going to move this collar all the way down because the jackets are an exact length. We want to make sure they have the exact amount of flare on the mouth in order to accept the core. What we're using for a core is a Lee 124 grain 9mm truncated comb bullet that's cast out of wheel weights. And what this guy is for is to eject it. Put this on here. And we can also lubricate the inside of it. In order to do that, just take this and a little lubricant, rub your finger on it like that. It'll get lubricant inside the, the jacket itself. You can also take this um, little mandrel out and polish it with some emery paper to make it nice and smooth so that when the case goes on it, or the jacket goes on it, I'm sorry, it will do so very smoothly. And now, we're ready to seat cores. See how that works? This goes through and it'll knock that jacket right out. And if you really wanted to, because it's down here like that, you can tap it with a with a mallet to start flattening out the base. Just give it a couple thuds right there. It makes it nice and flat. Let's get this guy out of here. That's one of the tools we made. Now we're going to replace this with the 9mm swage punch. Because this is what's going to drive the core inside the jacket. It's going to fill it out. It's going to seat it real nice. Okay, we got the 9mm swage punch in here. Now we're going to put the 40 caliber core seat die, core swage die, whatever you want to call it, inside the press. This is where you're going to need your rubber mallet. You can use a wooden handle. I like using a rubber mallet because it doesn't make as much racket. Now we take the bullet, the um, 125 grain truncated cone, we put it in point first, just like that. See how that works? Drop it in. We're going to put the core like that, and the base is going to go up, run that in there, and we're going to run it down until we feel resistance. We feel good resistance. We're going to run it down until it stops. You're going to, it's going to be kind of hard to turn. Now we need to expand the core and seat it. You're going to keep turning this a quarter to an eighth of a turn until you feel this thing cam over and it's going to have to cam over pretty hard. Um, just a little side note, don't use linotype or anything like that. Wheel weight's about as hard as you want. Pure lead is probably the best because it'll expand out a lot easier without um, bulging the, the swage punch. And if you're afraid you're going to bulge out the swage punch, 
go ahead and, and uh, heat treat it so it won't expand. And what you're going to find is when you have the, uh, the right amount of pressure, the jacket core combination will come off of this punch. Otherwise, if you don't have enough pressure on there, it's going to keep coming out like that. And once you have enough pressure, it's going to expand out real nice. So it'll take up the inside of the die and bring the jacket out to 400 inch in diameter. Nice. So there it is. There's the first one. We have this thing sitting there pretty good. Put the next one in. Run in gent real gentle. Second one. Third one. There we go. Reach over here. You notice that these are finished bullets. They are ready to fire. They have lubricant in them. Um, you can have the lubricant on there. Or not, it doesn't make a difference to me. I don't think it's going to affect accuracy that much out of a handgun. If it was a rifle bullet, I would say make sure you use um, bullets that haven't been sized and lubed. But you know, this is for instructional purposes only, right? And for the last one, we're going to take the camera and we're going to get a nice close up of the bullet core and jacket seated together. All right. I want to show you um, why we're doing what we're doing here in a second. I'm going to change the camera angle and I'm going to show you the close-ups. Okay, we're looking at the, the mouth of the bullet here. This is what's going to be formed into the point. And you'll see on the inside that the core is recessed inside the jacket very evenly and consistently. That little 9mm core swage punch does magic on these. There's the base, all nice and closed up. It's not fully closed. I don't think these are going to come out once the, uh, the jacket has been pointed. And this is, like I said, this is a multi-step operation. Now you, you'll see this, man, a little bit of crud on there, no big deal. We're gonna, if you want to, you can put these in your tumbler when you're all done and make them nice and pretty. But this is what they look like. This is without the gas check in the base. And I don't know if the gas check in the base is uh, absolutely necessary or not. But uh, I got some experimental bullets I'm going to try with those. But that's the base is closed up. Now we've got to go ahead and put the point on there. The point forming operation on this takes several steps because what we want to do is take the bullet that we just made and we want to take that edge here this, this leading edge we want to curl it over and in just a little bit to lock it in there and <clears throat> theoretically this should expand real nice and hold the the core in real well. It may. I don't have a notching um, capability yet. I had there's a form member on our form. He's also on cast cast picks. He's made a XTP style notching device that looks makes a beautiful XTP style bullet. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to start tapering this down with the point forming die. And then we're going to take it out and do a couple other things to it. And then we want to rerun them through the point forming die if we need to. These are a little bit shorter than the ones I made yesterday. So <clears throat> we may not have to do that at all. Let me change the camera angle and reassemble the uh, point forming die. <laughs> 